Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna be doing a study with me video. I've never done a study with me video before, but all I have been doing is studying because my final exams are coming up. Instead of studying alone, I wanna take you guys out for the ride and show you guys what I study and how I study. I know I say this a lot in my videos, but if you've never watched any of my videos, I'm majoring in athletic training, which is pretty much sports medicine. As an athletic training student, my classes heavily revolve around anatomy, orthopedic assessments, and sport and athletic injuries. In today's study session, I'm gonna be focusing on the anatomy and the injuries that occur to the lower leg, the ankle, and the foot. The first thing I like to do before I open up my laptop and start reading my notes is, just wait for it, give me like three seconds, is study my bone anatomy with this mini skeleton model. I know that this is a really small model. I'm gonna lay it down right here and let's just go over the bones of the foot really fast. Let's start off medially with your tibia, which is your weight bearing bone. Lateral to that, you're gonna have your fibula. Right below those structures, you're gonna have your talus right here, kind of on the medial aspect. Then anterior to that, you're gonna have your navicular, which articulate with your three cuneiforms. So you have your medial cuneiform, your intermediate cuneiform, and your lateral cuneiform. Lateral to the cuneiforms, you're gonna have your cuboid. Posterior to the cuboid, you're gonna have your calcaneus, which is your heel bone. As we move anteriorly, we are gonna have the metatarsals, which eventually connect to the phalanxes via the metatarsal phalangeal joints. Then within your phalanges, you're gonna have your proximal interphalangeal joints and your distal interphalangeal joints. Now that we know our bones of the lower leg, it's time to start going over the muscles of the lower leg. To go over muscles, I like to use this really big book of the watch chart of human anatomy. Now the only downside to just using images and visuals to study muscular anatomy is that you still have to learn the origin, the insertion, the innervation, and the action of the muscle. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna be going over the origin, insertion, innervation, action, because that is just gonna take too long. But what I usually do is I sit down in the beginning of the day and I write these things all out on a sheet of paper. I go over them and see if I actually know them. Now the easiest way to understand the muscles is to divide them into compartments. Let's start off with the calf muscles on the posterior compartment. You're gonna have your gastrocnemius, your solus, and your plantaris which primarily are responsible for plantar flexion. You're gonna have your tibialis posterior, which is also responsible for plantar flexion and slight inversion. You're gonna have your flexor digitorum longus, which is responsible for flexing your toes. And you're gonna have your flexor hallucis longus, which is responsible for flexing your big toe. We're gonna move on to the anterior compartment where you're gonna have your tibialis anterior, which is mainly responsible for dorsiflexion. You're also gonna have your extensor digitorum torum longus, which is responsible for extending your toes, and your extensor hallucis longus, which is responsible for extending your big toe. The last compartment we're going to be looking at is the lateral compartment, which is where you're going to have your peroneus longus and brevis, which are mainly responsible for eversion. We went over the anatomy successfully, now it's time to open up my laptop and go over some foot deformities. The way that I like to go over my notes is that pretty much what I do is that at the very end, of every set of notes, I ask questions, and when I study, all I really do is read my notes one time, literally just one time, I blaze through them, and then I just answer the questions that I made for myself. I just find that the more active you are when you're studying, it just helps you memorize the information better. Alright, so these are pretty much all the foot deformities that I need to learn for my class. I know the handwriting is really bad, but honestly all I do is answer the questions, I go over my notes, make sure they're right, and if they're wrong I kind of just ride over them, but if they're all right, like if it's 100% correct, you know what I do? 
I throw it away and then just do it again the next day. For the deformity section, I just went over really basic things like pest cavus and pest planus, which is a high arc and a flat foot. I also went over some other things like hallux valgus, which is when your big toe points laterally, which is not supposed to happen. Claw toes, hammer toes, mallet toes. These are all deformities that happen specifically to the toes. Lastly, I went over foot supination and pronation, which is pretty much the way that your foot kind of like lands. So if it's supinated, that means it's more like internally rotated versus if it's pronated, it tends to be more externally rotated. The next section I'm gonna go over are injuries to the foot and toes. There's a good amount of them, so let me get them done. All of this right here, all of these papers, it's like three, four sheets of paper back and forth. That is filled with all the injuries that I had to learn. You have to know how to define the injury. You have to know the mechanism of injury, the structures involved, the sign and symptoms, as well as any special test, any preventative measures that can be taken to prevent the injury, and lastly, the treatment. And I pretty much did that with about 30 different injuries. Some basic injuries that we could talk about are your ankle sprains. There's actually three types of ankle sprains with the most common one being the lateral ankle sprain. A lateral ankle sprain is pretty much a sprain to your anterior talofibular ligament, your calcaneofibular ligament, or your posterior talofibular ligament. The most commonly injured ligament though is the anterior one just because of the mechanism of the injury and the anatomy of the structure. Medial ankle sprains occur to the deltoid ligament which is around the medial malleoli. And then you have your high ankle sprains which happen with external rotation which are a little bit more rare but they're also a little bit more severe. Then for all these ankle sprains you can do special tests so for example, for a lateral ankle sprain, you would do an anterior drawer test. For a medial ankle sprain, you could do a Taylor tilt or a Kliger's test. And then for a high ankle sprain, you would do a syndesmotic test or a compression test. Another big injury that I learned about was actually foot fractures. There's two types that I learned about. There's a stress fracture to the foot and then a traumatic fracture to the foot. Then I learned about very specific injuries like a Jones fracture or a Dancer's fracture, which is pretty much a fracture to the proximal base of the fifth metatarsal. Then there's some nerve injuries that I learned about like tarsal tunnel syndrome, which is pretty much when your tibial nerve gets entrapped in your tarsal tunnel. Tunnel, and Morden's neuroma, which is an injury to the digital nerves of your third and fourth metatarsal, but it causes pain along your metatarsal number two all the way to the fourth one. So yeah, just a lot of different injuries overall in the foot. Now the last section I'm gonna go over tonight includes injuries that are more severe, like fractures, dislocations, also injuries that are more life or limb threatening. But just one more, just one more section to go until we are done. I honestly cannot wait. Finally got the last set of injuries right. So with these traumatic foot injuries, it's just stuff that require more attention and are just more of an emergency. Besides fractures and acute dislocations, I think that the most interesting injury on this list probably has to be compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is when your compartment enlarges so much that it could lead to narrow vascular compromise. It mainly happens with a really, really forceful hit and it requires surgery like immediately. It's really important that they're diagnosed really fast. If it doesn't get treated right away, it could actually lead to amputation and that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Even though like when I edited everything it comes out really short, I've probably been studying for about three hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I do think it was kind of cool to show you guys what I learned and how I learned it. So let me know if you want to see more of these type of videos in the future. It's really late. I'm going to be getting some sleep. That is pretty much it for me. But always remember to stay hydrated.